Okay, so Get Out was one. Of, I was like one of my favorite movies this Thank year, you, and and, uh, and it's so exciting to do this with you because obviously everyone at this at doing this is really top of their craft, but you know every, everybody else are legends, and we're like you know <laughs> just starting out here, we're just trying to figure it out. So what um, I guess questions you've been asked a thousand times, but what what. How'd you hear about the project? Was there an audition process? How'd you get into it? Or? It's a weird situation because um, I, uh, I did this show called Black Mirror right. back in England, 2011. Bing. Bing. Oh, you know. <laughs> yes. Jesus. See, this is surreal to me. Like, yeah. It's surreal to me that it still lives. So I did it in 2011. Nothing really happened in England. And then Netflix happened. So Netflix happened, like 2014, 2015. And then Americans started watching this show that I did like three years before. And then Jordan Peele watched it. Uh, and then he, was, he had the script, and I, I read the script, and I was like, yo, this script is insane. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, are you allowed to do you know, it, it just felt like it cost him something. Mm -hmm. you know, I always think that's really exciting to work with a filmmaker that's like putting it all on the line, do you know, and saying stuff that's not. And then we Skyped, and then later, it took a couple months, and then I had a film called Sicario coming out. Right. And then in the press run, I went to audition for the role, and then I got it. And that was in London or LA? That was in LA. That was in LA. So I was just, the premiere of Sicario was in, in New York. Then I went to LA. I was just like, I should just And you're right in LA. That's always a good feeling. It always makes you feel like, you know, you're in LA, you're making moves. Yeah. And it's it's, it's always good to, I always feel like it's always good to, uh, to be there. You have to be there. You in front of the person? To, yeah, yeah. So you don't like self-tapes as much? I do. I've got Sicario for self-tape. Okay. But like sometimes it's, it's, people have to see you and know you. No, it's true. And so, sometimes you do a self-tape and there's a simple note the casting director is giving. Everybody, because everybody keeps making the same mistake yeah, yeah, if yeah, you do yeah. it at home. Yeah. Also, at home, you can control too much sometimes, yeah, too, yeah. I find. How did you get to uh, call me by your name? So, Which is amazing. And hey, you're amazing man. in it, bro. Honestly. And thank man. you so much, because uh, you were at the screening the other night, and yeah, that was yeah, cool, yeah. seeing a bunch of older people, none of whom I know, coming yeah. out of the screening room and then being like, there's Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have this nice conversation soon. Um, I was 17. Uh, my uh, my agent Brian Schwartzstrom, he represents Tilda Swinton, and she's the actress that's the lead of a lot of his other movies, like mm -hmm. I Am Love and A Bigger Splash. And they had this project that didn't have a script yet called Call Me By Your Name, and Luca was a producer on it at the time. So Brian said meet with this kid in New York, and we had a great meeting. And very very thankfully, Luca doesn't audition his actors; he never has. So uh, and then it was like a like a loose attachment thing, but it, even at a young age, it became clear in show business. You know, you become attached to these things and. Most of them never come to any sort of fruition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, and it was just a waiting game. You know, we thought maybe that summer it would happen, it didn't happen. Maybe the summer after that it would happen, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You start losing hope a little bit. And finally, like three years into it, then it, then wow. it happened. So. so it was a three year process. Say it again? It was a three year process. It was like a three year, yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, and, and in many ways it feels like the project of my youth or something because I've just, it's been on the periphery for so long. So, it really was, and then we shot it, and now it's been in a, like a year and a half process to get it out. So yeah. I'll be, you know, I'm gonna be 22 soon, and I, I heard about him when I was 17. So, so like in terms of like him not auditioning people, so how was that meeting then? What is he? What do you feel like he was trying to see out of you? Well, I, I like that, and I, and I have this impression with other people I meet with sometimes. I'm curious if you have it too. They're just like sussing you out, and they're feeling yeah. out your vibe, which is <laughs> weird because you don't want to be fake or yeah. certainly there's a level of artificiality to all of this, but like. You want to be real, but then you see, like, when else do you eat with someone and they're just, like, like judging you yeah. and like, making assumptions Dates. about you? Yeah. Hey, Leo, Oliver. Oliver, hey, Leo. How you doing? Nice to meet you, Elio. You must be exhausted. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come. May I bring your things up to your room? Uh, sure, yeah. My room? <laughs> Follow him. Okay, now, this is, um, I, again, I'm sure you've gotten this a thousand times, but had you watched Key and Peele before? Were you a fan of it? Bro, I'd watched, like, we, it'd be, I, I got with my friends, yeah, and we'd watch a film together, mm -hmm. and then we'd go, what should we do? Let's watch go Key on YouTube, yeah, <laughs> just watch, watch Key, Key and Peele Peel videos, <laughs> just constantly Key and Peele. But that's what was Totally amazing. sober, too. That's what was so surreal. It was more surreal that Key, Jordan Peele knew who I was. I didn't, mm -hmm. I, that was like blew my mind. Cause in my WhatsApp groups, that's all you talk about. Is like and did he Pill. say, had he watched, had he come across that episode of Black Mirror on his own? Was it a casting director that sent it to him? No, he okay. just came across it. That's but I think it was a time when like a lot of people in, in, in the industry um, on a certain frequency had, was just watching Black Mirror. And then it became a thing. So huh. it was before the Yeah, I was part of it becoming a thing. I was like not on the first wave of Black Mirror. <laughs> yeah. well, no, it probably was bro, but it's like, it, it, like, it beca like, before the new series came out, so it right. was like the older. Right, because they re they uh, they one they did one with Joe Wright and right, right. Joe Wright directed it. They stopped it and, and they brought it back. They brought it? it back, yeah. So it was like it was just it's just so it's so so surreal. It's like 
like, I mean, a lot of the jobs I've got recently have been from stuff I did in 09 or 2010 or 2011. That's crazy to me. So they, like, Ryan Coogler saw me in a short film that I did in London, like a really low-key short film, but he saw it in Sundance. I thought short films got locked in a safe no. somewhere for no one to Listen, see ever. it's random. So he just saw it, and then, then he wanted me to do Panther. So then, like, it was, like, just loads of stuff, and then Widow, Steve McQueen saw me in a play in 2010. That's so sick. Now, so I don't know like, how much we're supposed to talk about Black Panther or if we're supposed to be talking about the other stuff, but how was that, man? Because I can't wait to see that. Crazy, that's one bro. of the Marvel ones that's coming out that's it's so crazy, exciting, bro. man. It's crazy, it's gonna, it's just, it's just so crazy, bro. I, I, like, I, I keep on saying it's like, there was a time when Chad came out of, um, He's so good. It, he's so he's such a good actor. And then it was in the waterfall scene, he came out, I can't say what happens, but he was walking out into the waterfall and I got chilled. I, I've never Were you in the seen scene or no? Huh? I was in the scene, yeah, I was in the scene. <laughs> was I wasn't just watching somewhere like, getting chills? Mm. <laughs> Look at these goosebumps. Like, hey, Daniel, let's go again. Um, do the lines. Do less the chills. Yeah, less, less chills, Dan. Uh, no, but it was like a massive set piece, and then it was just so special to be a part That's, of it. That's, like that. man, okay, and you have to come off, but I'm all curious about all this. Now, with Jordan, I, like, my experience, because I'm a huge Keen Peel fan, yeah. now I know he's, like, the brilliant auteur that I made Get Out. Before, if I had read it, I'm sure on the page it was already like, whoa, this is going to be an amazing thing. But it's just a different world. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times. So what was like the moment? Maybe it was in a Skype. Maybe you were hanging out with him. Maybe it was on set. But you thought, wow, you know, this guy is actually like a real, really amazing filmmaker. And I, mean, mm, no, I saw it on the page, man. Okay. I saw it like the first line. Because I read scripts for fun. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would just like oh, really? find my favorite films and read them. What really? Because it's fun. Dude, you're so. Yeah. That means like I want to read Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That means it's fun though. I'm like, stealing like, that. That's such like a good actor thing. Yeah, like, I just think. And then it, it doesn't it give you anxiety. You. What? Doesn't make you feel like oh man, like these movies are so good. Like no, it just makes you you go. Well, I I want to know why I like something. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm more informed than why I want to say no to something. I want to say yes to something. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time it's just it's no thyself. Like you know in yourself. And mm -hmm. so you kind of go oh okay cool. I like this. So when it came in, and it, there was a thing that wasn't even, they didn't even make it into the film. It was like an extract from the Bible, and I was like, he knows the world. It was just such a considered, it was, it was like one a, of those things where the script had a quote Yeah, a beginning. quote from the Bible, and I just felt like, it's just a feeling you get on the page. It's just like, he, he, you can tell when a writer knows where they're going. Mm -hmm. It's like a trust. Mm -hmm. Like, you know where you're going. And you always know when a writer doesn't know. Don't you, yeah, don't you feel that? I, I guess. I don't know. I, there was something I struggle with is, the and I struggle with this when I, even when I was in drama high school. But you have your instincts, and but then you think to yourself too, what I'm 21 or or younger, and you know what do I know? What's nice now is I'm trusting my yeah. instinct, reading things more. So, but you was in Lady Bird, yes, which is amazing. I saw it the other yeah, week. Yeah, she well. saw it too. So Thank good. you. Um, so like, oh, it's such a special, so well observed, such a well observed film. So what was it about that script that you was like, oh wow, this is something? You know. Weirdly, it was, it was a role, but it was really like Greta and Sersha and getting to work with them because yeah. Greta I'd seen in Francis Ha, and just reading the script, it was so specific and everything was so detailed, which mm -hmm. is what I like about the movie because the relatable, normal characters, but everything is so specific. Like one of my favorite lines I have in the movie is, I haven't lied in two years, which is like one of the, like it's so, <laughs> who speaks like it's that? Like, so, uh, like on the chart, like yeah. And he's like keeping two track, year anniversary. Like, oh, so pretentious. So, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and, and also to work with Sersha, who uh, was in Brooklyn, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know. It, it, and it was just an amazing experience to be in L.A. And, so you shot that in L.A.? Yeah, that was in L.A. for two, three weeks, and, and uh, it was great to be with Lucas, too, he, and he has the other role mm -hmm. in the movie, because we're both from New York, so we've been seeing each other in casting offices oh, for you. like four or five years. And, you know, he was in Manchester by the Sea, which is yeah, a movie yeah, that amazing. I was he's diligently waiting in a yeah, casting yeah. office for, and, uh, and never got the call, rightfully, because he's... Fucking amazing in that movie. Sir, can I see your license, please? Wait, why? No, no, no. He wasn't driving. I didn't ask who was driving. I asked to see his ID. You don't have to give him your ID because you haven't done anything wrong. Maybe, baby, it's okay. Come on. Anytime there is an incident, we have every right to That's ask. Cool. All right, so get out. That was like on a. This is Wikipedia's facts, which <laughs> are, are, are usually not uh, the most accurate, but it says on Wikipedia it's a $4.5 million budget. Yeah, it was. And then it made. Like, two fifty in it. Okay. You know, a like that little hand raise, little two, hand raise. Two fifty <laughs> gigas. <laughs> okay, so what, so you know, I like asking this because I feel like a lot of people have been asking me this recently. But how does that? How does it change one's life? Maybe it doesn't change it at all. Maybe it's healthier for it not to change. Or maybe you're like, I'm gonna go down 
Like a comet? No. Well, like a comet. I'm like, there's certain times when I can't get the bus. Sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, just like school times. I just can't, I can't get a bus like that. No, when you say school times, I'm curious about that. As in when... When the kids are coming out of school. See, but this is why I'm so happy to do this with you because... I struggle with, like, I do a lot of theater in New York, too, and I'm passionate yeah. about it, but it's tough when you look out. Not tough. These are first-world problems. But, you know, it's a, they're older audiences, you know, and I, I'm a young person who loves acting and filmmaking and theater, yeah. and that's why it's so exciting to do this with you, because Get Out was a movie that yeah. wasn't yeah. a yeah. gatekeeper phenomenon, yeah. but rather, like, everybody my age, whether it was because of you or Jordan or just the movie was amazing, Jordan Peele. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so, I'm sorry, I cut you off there. But, no, no, uh, it's, that's what was quite... I mean, I, I realize I'm back home in London because I've done loads of stuff back home. And even Black Mirror, like, loads of stuff I've done is, like, I did a show called Skins, and that kind of changed. Oh, my God, I didn't know you were in Skins. Yeah, that I was Skins the... back in the day, bro. Like, they made an like... American version that was not what the British version No, was, I can't, but, I can't yeah. have an opinion. Yeah, no comment, the, no comment, no comment. I haven't seen the American version. Yeah. But, like, oh, uh, you were in the American version? No, I'm in the English version. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm in the first, series, first yeah. two series. And then that kind of was like, oh, everyone my age. It was kind of like this, in, it, like, oh, it's a, a show made by teenagers. Uh, written by teen teenagers, because I wrote it as well, written by teenagers and um, targeted to te teenagers. So you're literally surrounded constantly. And then people. I do other stuff and it's like, it was more highbrow, so you, no one knows. So I can kind of go to parties and no one really cares. Right, right, right. If I'm doing an episode here or if I'm doing Black Mirror. Black Mirror was like in the kind of artsy scene people Yeah, I wonder who, what kind of people are stopping people from Black Mirror. Because, Not really, hey, you're in Black Mirror, right? That's like the craziest people. But like, <laughs> no, Get right. Out was just so kind of like everyone. I, everyone that I was around, everyone, all my friends would watch it. So people that don't care about, that watch Fast and Furious, they would watch and get out. So it was like people that I grew up with, everyone, like, I always know, because I'm from an estate, which is like a project. So when I ever go back, like, well, I'll come back from work, if like people come up to me about it. Because they usually don't care. If people come up to me and go, oh, that trailer, man, that trailer, if they get excited about it, that, that's not the industry, that's just normal life. And yeah, that's exactly. when it changes, because just like, Oh, I'm living my. I have to navigate life differently because someone's asking you for advice on the tube. Do you know what I mean about like their life wow, and what that's they can do? Do you know I mean because because I'm a young black man that's doing my thing? Do you know what I mean and I'm not from a privileged background, so then a lot of time they're just going, oh, how? And do you what? find so? The, yeah, I'm sure that there are questions that are specific yeah. to that and the in the inspiration. But don't you get that in New York? Like people you know, know, people must know who you are, and they well, like, like come the, up to the you. The tremendous benefit is this film hasn't come out yet. Nobody has an idea who I am anyway, so. I mean, no, it really hasn't happened yet. A, a little bit. Somebody dropped a bag of peach candies in front of me at a Chipotle the other day, and they ran off. I made sure the seal wasn't broken, so I wasn't getting cyanide or something. Not that anybody's trying to poison anybody, but... Uh, uh, that's one for the memoir. <laughs> that's one for the memoir, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a memoir that four people will buy. I can't believe you changed it again. Oh, I changed it a little bit. Yeah, why? I just played it the way Buzzoni would have played it if he'd altered Liszt's version. So, and why it'd be funny that it's uh, Peach Candies, for those that haven't seen the film, it's gonna be very weird to explain this, but... I don't want to spoil it, because it's like... Yeah, I want to spoil it. There's a great, uh, there's a great uh, fruit, fruit, fruit love scene. So <laughs> when, when was that in the shoot? When was that in the schedule? That's a good question. Like, so when was that in the schedule? Were you dreading it? Yes. Or was it, was it like kind of like on set? You know, you know like the grips and that. No, that's like, true. Oh, it's coming. No, it's true. It's so I have sex with a peach in this film. But it's a great film. Not that it wouldn't be a great film without a sex. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Peach? Yeah. Yeah, peach I try to have great. sex with fruit in every movie that yeah. I do now. Peach, uh, high end cinema. That's a, that's, hey, that's the, yeah. That's in fact, I saw a very like, I, I saw a fan made poster online the other day with a p big peach on it that was like super well done. Uh, so that was maybe three, four weeks into the, the shoot. And, and, Obviously, you're aware of why that would help because first day jitters are all yeah. you're all over the place, and it just there was the the there, there was an anxiety that was taken away in that Luca, our director, Luca Guadagnino, our director, said he thought maybe it worked better as a literary metaphor in the book and that it could never really work well as a visual metaphor. And he came up to me, you know, maybe a week or two weeks before shooting, he goes, "Timmy, you know, I tried it and, and, and it works." And I was like, "Of course it works, Luca. Like, were you never a teenager?" <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we won't get into that now. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and did you try it before? And, uh, next question. And, uh, <laughs> and, you did it. And, uh, <laughs> so, and it just felt like if it never, as I progress and keep moving the, the conversation along, now it just felt like if it wasn't going to be any good, that it wouldn't be in the movie. So, um, and I just knew the prescription for myself. 
often I'll, if I'm doing a scene or even like press stuff like this, it's not so much to achieve something, it's to, there's like a certain area maybe I don't want to hit. And I just knew in that scene I didn't want to be trying to be funny or, mm. or you know, oh God, here it is. It's like the prescription is what would truthfully yeah. be going and down it, and it, it read in like the that. scene. It was really truthful. Man. Um, so in terms of like, <laughs> how much did you lean on the source material? It's tough because, and this really is the honest answer, in the moments where I'd be really struggling and couldn't figure out what was going on with the character, it really was like a Bible, it was like an infinite amount yeah, of stuff yeah, to pull yeah. from. But then, especially in a coming of age movie and like a, in a, in a, in a sexual coming of age movie, like Spontaneity, those are my favorite moments in movies like Blue's Warmest Color and, and films like that. So I didn't want to lose that. So yeah, I don't know, it's a fine line. Because you want to be faithful to the book too. So did you get to a point where you're like, I'm not engaging with the book anymore? Certainly like... in the pre-production process. Now yeah. once we were shooting, like I said, if I got lost in a scene, or sometimes I could even say something to Luca, oh, wouldn't you think it, don't you think it'd happen like this? And he'd be <laughs> like, <laughs> can't because this mm -hmm. is how it goes down here. Mm -hmm. So there was that experience. But certainly in the pre-production process, and I'm curious what it's like for you and, and your pre-production process, you know, you do the research, and then at a certain point you gotta be like, all right, just gotta let it go. I remember, I, it was actually in Black Mirror, like, I, feel like I learned a lot doing British TV, and it was Black Mirror, and then we, he did a, a hot seat in situation, me and Jess Brown Finley, um, who was in it as well, and then like, he asked us questions about the character, I had a question about the character, I mean, he literally spent a whole day doing this. It was quite intense, because it was like, some things he was like, no, I don't think that's right, da, da, da. Huh. and then at the end he was like, okay, forget about it. I was like, what? <laughs> Days work, right? uh, and then and he was, was like, oh no, if it, if it makes sense, it will stick. Hmm. So I kind of adopt that mm -hmm. and kind of like before I film something, I try not to watch movies because it makes me too self aware. I can't watch movies when we're shooting something. It makes me too self aware. I watch documentaries sometimes. Documentaries or cartoons? Yeah, yeah, like, and then, and then but I'll read the script every day. Just read the script every day because I want it to be in my bones. I don't want to be thinking, where am I? So you want to be in a scene going, I know what. I know what this is. I'm not, like, and I know forget out, were you shooting in sequence or out of sequence? Nah, out of sequence. So you really needed to... So but it was also, it was a 23-day shoot. So it was 23 days. 23 days shoot, crazy. so it was like war. So what was the pre-production process with Jordan Peele like? Was there a series of discussions and preparations? Oh, yeah, no, we... Um, we he sat down with, He sat down with, like, little groups. We went to a, a house in Alabama, because hmm. he shot in Alabama. And we, we and, um, went to a house, all the, all the cast, the main cast, we just hung out for a weekend. That's awesome. It was when Kanye dropped Life of Pablo. Uh, we watched great, um, that. And we watched the SNL performance when it was released. So it was that weekend. But anyway, so no, that's random. But we went to, uh, <laughs> we went to uh, separate rooms and Jordan would go off and then we'd talk about the scene. And then we'd just improvise. So we go, all right, cool, this is the scene. All right, cool, put it to the side and let's, see, let's feel it. So me and Alison would and go did he, and, and for the improv, it's so, you're so fucking excellent in this movie and everyone is so natural. Now, it, and that, that was the other thing I was going to ask you about today, because certainly I even, like, I think of one of my favorite Key and Peele sketches, and they are very, they're all subtle, but I guess there's humor in Get Out that is, more, that I, I found to be even more subtle than what the sketch mm -hmm. comedy was, so, and was there ever a clear direction in the rehearsal process? Did he ever say to you, this is, this is all supposed to be like real life, this is just supposed to be grounded in reality? Or? Uh, no, I, I kind of wanted that. Sure. I, I've always wanted that, like, I kind of... But that's just my personal taste, where okay. I don't want a, the, the character to feel like they're in the genre that they're in. Huh. You know what I mean? So mm. I just, I, I, if I'm in... get out, I wouldn't even know what genre. I, learned, I did this film called Psychoville, and this director, Matt Lipsy, he said to me, at 19, he was like, I did the scene, it's like a horror comedy series. Mm -hmm. And I did the scene, and I was doing it, and it was like, I was, I think I was trying to chat up a Siamese twin. <laughs> Been, I've been Good around. Writing. Good I've writing. Around. And, then like, <laughs> and then I did it, and he was like, and he just pulled me to the side, Daniel. And he went, Daniel, never play the funny, always play the truth. It's tough. And it just, and it just, I always carry that with me. So mm. I always felt like stuff. And I, so I went to Jordan and I was like, I just wanted to feel grounded. I just wanted to, but that's what I did in the audition. I just kind of was like, just want to play a real guy. And it's, he's, this is happening. And he just doesn't understand it's happening. But he's trying to figure it out as well. And he's trying to like, so it's all about, you want to see his like cognitive, like. No, but that's process. what's nuts. And then it's funny, like you say genre, but I wouldn't even, I, I don't know if Get Out is a horror movie. And it's interesting. I didn't know that you did a horror comedy series prior. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've, done, I've done some stuff. Come on, I get it. White family, black servants. It's a total cliche. I wasn't going to take you there. I hate the way it looks. By the way, I, I would have voted for Obama for a third term if I could. So you and Army Hammer yeah. have a very 
intense chemistry. Mm. How was that? Like, did you meet him before? No, did it was. You, is it just on set, or how did you map that out? And even the sex scene, how did you map all that out? Well, it was like the random luck of the universe where we had a uh, just a genuine bond, and we never read together beforehand. Oh. Luca didn't read him either. Luca wow. says, "If I, if I desire my actors and I love my actors, they'll they'll love each other too." So, wow. that's deep. Uh, says deep man. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the things that guy says. I'm like, well, I have no idea what I'm not smart enough to yeah. know what you're saying. Um, and then once we got out there, ha! Ah, it's so it's it's been so strange to have talked about this like for a year and a half and and to say like this is how we did it and because mm. there was no game plan, there was no awareness what mm. we were doing was any good. Mm. 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 And it was just about sp spending time with one another and. Weirdly, the relationship in the pre-production process kind of took on the form of the movie, save for all the crazy stuff. But, you know, we were riding around bikes in a small town in Italy, and I'd been there a little bit in advance, so I got to show him, you know, where I was having, having espressos every morning. And, and, and also, we weren't in L.A. We weren't, like, he wasn't going home to his family every day. We just hung out with each other a lot mm -hmm. and all the time. And I pray you get a working experience with Army mm -hmm. because this is, I've been so lucky in, even right now, getting to talk to you, I feel like I got lucky doing this right oh, now with you because, you, God forbid, man, it was like some some really scary, uh, <laughs> you know, intense older. Let me uh, let me ask about so you yeah. speak a lot of languages. I speak French. I speak French. So, in how was <laughs> like that like? <laughs> how was that in working? Have you worked in? No, it's surreal because growing up. You know, I spent my summers in France growing up, but it's really the American parts of my personality and my upbringing that I've always encouraged the outgoing, broken narcissist in me. And or no, you know what I mean. I'm just joking. But like the the <laughs> desire, the desire to uh, be an actor and uh, be a good ensemble member, but mm. um, but to speak to speak words, to speak lines. And my French side of me is way more repressed, almost by nature. You know. Uh, and and certainly growing up, you know, I wasn't in the New York equivalent of France. I was in a tiny town called Le Chambon Sur Union. So what's been really kind of trippy about calling by your name is that acting that's very much an outgoing and a performative thing for me, or not performative, shouldn't be performative, should be like real and honest, is, uh, is that this French through line found its way in somehow. So um, I don't know, it's weird. My, my father's French, mm -hmm. so he's certainly... Uh, I'm very excited about it, but yeah, yeah. So like, even that, so that's like, a good segue because one of the scenes that really got me was the conversation with your father. Yeah, that, man. And then that speech that he gave. And um, so what was that like filming it? And I think that's one of the most refreshing themes in this film is yeah. the parents' attitudes yeah. towards ah, the relationship. So it's like, um, what, 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 how did that feel to you and, and, and everyone on work? Well, that, Michael Stuhlbarg, he plays Mr. Perlman, the father. He's so incredible. It's, he's, you know, he takes notes with a ruler in his script, which I think is like a nice indicator of how yeah. he's just, he knows, he, knows, he knows exactly what's going down. And, uh, and when it came time to shoot that scene, like I said, I went to a bunch of theater stuff growing up in New York. I, I really consider myself a theater kid. And he was in Martin McDonough's Pillow Man. I must have been 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. So this is someone mm -hmm. I really looked up to. And when it came time to do that scene, that's very much his scene. You know, I have to be present and listening and there for him. But I, you know, it was just like stay a fly on the wall, Timmy, and just let let the master go to work. And there was the experience of really hearing it too in that mm. monologue and getting to hear, you know, don't push away pain in your life and embrace it and 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 live and let live. And to feel crummy doesn't mean that you should not just feel crummy and sit in that state. I can't move. You're paralyzed. Now. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. This is a scene, because I, I was even talking with a buddy on the phone, telling him that I was going to get, we're going to have this discussion, an actor friend of mine, and we both, like, I was saying, like, wait, wait, what are some things you think I can ask? And we both landed on the same thing, and he, he brought it up first, actually. And we don't have to get into the specifics, whatever, he maintain the mystery of the performance, but the... That sunken chair scene, <laughs> that scene is so crazy. And I just, I, in the most obviously fantastic ways, and I just, I, I mean, how, how, how'd you guys shoot it? What was the rehearsal process like? Did you know it was going to be so, because it's a two-person scene, but it's very much like, then it's her, and then you have to carry so much of that. There's mm. so much going on. Mm. And, and I, so I guess the way I would formulate the question was, was it scripted to be such a, uh, like a climax for you of sorts. No, it wasn't. It, it, it's, it's weird that that scene, I mean, <laughs> Jordan did say on set, yo, yo, this is iconic. 
<laughs> he, did he say that? He said that oh, on set. I, I know that. he said that on set. That. But he said it a lot on set. And I was like, ah, oh, he's, he's, he's amping us up. He's, uh, but um, but he, uh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it didn't feel like that. It felt like, a, it felt like an intense day because it was just that scene that day. So it was like mm. a fire pace scene, that scene that day. And, and, and we blocked it out. And it was just, you had to be on. So I knew that I couldn't really like joke around because I kind of joke around on set like with the crew. And right. that, so I couldn't really joke yeah. around. I had to go into yeah, the headphones? space. No, 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 no. Yeah. I just walk away. Okay. I just walk away and oh, I just want nice. to talk to anyone. Right. I think it's more intense if you just kind of true. just it's sit weirder. there and don't want to talk to anyone. That's yeah. even darker. That's just saying I can listen to music, but I yeah. don't even want to talk to you. Yeah, now I'm level. I'm like a level. <laughs> I'm like. Um, so it's yeah. like, and so yeah, no, I just got, I just kept in, kept in that space, kept in that space, mm -hmm. and it's just like, tapped into, it's just empathy, man, and I tapped mm -hmm. into that kind of like, it just the writing was so good, and I, I, I just tapped into that darkness in me and pain that I've kind of felt in my mm -hmm. life, and I kind of was just like, cool, let's let's let loose, and also it's just empathizing with someone that's like going through so much and is like suppressed it, kind of suppressed his guilt mm -hmm. of like a really bad situation, mm -hmm. it's shame. Do you know what I mean? And, and also there's the reluctance to face it, but he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed emotionally. And I identified that in all walks of life. I mean, it's the same with, I don't know, sexism, with hmm. if something's happening and a woman can't say anything because she'll lose her job. Do you know what I mean? She's like paralyzed hmm. in it, situationally. So I kind of thought that that's such a dynamic that everyone kind of identify with. And I've identified in so many different ways in this kind of release of emotion that's uncontrollable, mm. which is, um, I just kind of really identified with. Have you seen The Master? Yes, I have. You know what scene reminds me a lot of that? In that, that interrogation yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those yeah, are like yeah. my favorite scenes in movies when actors are just like having to be totally yeah, it's present. It's pure, like it's pure. And it's just like, because it, all it is is emotion and character. And it's someone that's opening up that doesn't want to open up. Do you know what I mean? It's like someone, when someone said to me like crying, uh, crying, crying makes it heartbreaking, but some, seeing someone trying not to cry is even worse. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? So it's that kind of like, I, I'm, I'm not even happy that I'm crying. I hate this emotion. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, but I have to give it. So it's, that's, that's the There has to be some conflict there. Mm. Um, but um, so what's next for you? <laughs> Apart from running the world. So, yeah. No, what's next is it's all downhill. Yeah, what do you want to do, though? What do, what, so where, where do you, like, it's kind of like the world's your oyster, bro. Like, real talk. Like, you are just... Oh, man. You have got the juice. Dude, yeah, thank you. So it's wow. like, so man, it's and that like, was filmed, right? I have, I have Daniel Kaluuya <laughs> so saying that to me now, right? But, so it's just like, what, what, do you, what are you doing at the moment? What do mm. you want to do? What do you aspire, like, Well, for, I, and, I don't know, you know. It's... I, I don't know if you have this experience, too, where... You know, things have been going very well, and I feel like I have to suffocate the moment with appreciation or mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. really sit in it. And that's tough because, um, I don't know, uh, not tough. These are great things. Yeah. But, no, uh, it's tough, bro. No, if it's you find weird. it tough, it's tough. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you're, everyone's entitled to their Yeah, because it's problems, just like you're right? just navigating a new space. That that's what probably... it feels like. And also, I don't want to... It's tough because I don't want you to be the kind of thing where, because I even watched things I did when I was 19, yeah. and at 21 I go, man, I'm so thankful that I have two, two years now on that. And yeah. I, I just know I'm going to watch things four or five years from now and go, oh, man, I was clueless. Yeah. Or God forbid, I'm like, that was, those were the glory years, you know, <laughs> and I'm all washed up. And so I don't know, you know, I just want to work. It's just good directors, just good projects, good, you know, important storytelling. The way b beyond any sort of academic evaluation to ca call me by your name, what's so sick is the way people react to it, like visceral reactions to mm -hmm. it, or like the monologue you reference. And some mm -hmm. people have come up to me and say, I never had, you know, I've never, I never had that father. And mm -hmm. as a gay man, uh, uh, if I had had that father, my, my life would have been easier and things like that. So um, that's the goal is to keep doing things like that and not mm -hmm. to get, you know, it's fun being in LA. We were talking about this earlier, but it's a weird place out here, man. It's not London, it's not New York. <laughs> So, okay, so there's Get Out, and then you have the bigger movies that's, that are coming too. Yeah. And so is there, a, is there a goal for something else to do where you're taking it a day at a time, where you're riding the wave? Like, what's the philosophy? And actually, give me some advice here because uh, you probably you lead the way a little bit. Oh, thanks, bro. Uh, yeah. I kind of <laughs> just feel like I did Get Out, not because it was big, but because I believed in it. Right. So, and it happened to do what it did. I think I've got populist sensibilities. Just mm -hmm. growing up, I didn't grow up in the industry, so and I and I love highbrow cinema and, and like art house cinema, so I always would look for both, and it, I ideally look for both in the same project. I mean, someone that knows what they're doing. So I kind of just like, listen, if I feel it, if I feel it, 
then I feel it. Mm-hmm. Then my friends will feel it too because I'm around my friends. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I just want to make stuff for my friends. Dude, this is... Do you know what I mean? It's I want to be like, friends with your friends. Yeah, I it, love you. It's just like, I want my friends to go, oh, like, I really enjoyed that. Or like, the stuff that your mum would go, oh, yeah, I really like that. Do you know what I mean? And she watched Queen of Catway and she loved it. As you opposed mean? to, like... As opposed to, I mean, it's got to be doing something for, like, to serve. You're there to right. serve. Do you know what I mean? And so, if, for me, it's just like, on the page, do I feel it? And then kind of... And if the director, if I've, I'm very lucky that I've been working with people that I'm a fan of them already. Mm. Like I was watching the film, I was watching Black Panther anyway. Right. Like I, just don't, I don't know how I've managed to be in it. So it's just like, just keep doing. And that's doing, a good feeling, it's not intimidating. Yeah, no, it's just keep doing that and like, and being present. Because sometimes I may feel like I want to do this and it may be right to do a musical or whatever. Or whatever. Because I grew up and- Oh my gosh, are you doing a musical now? No, I'm not doing a musical. Probably.